upfront suggest that uh, after the presentation, let, let me say, Center for Business uh, Public Service in, uh, Innovation must present, and thereafter, the Department of uh, Public Service and Administration, and then we take discussions and clarity questions after both those I mean, uh, presentations. If members agree with that, Chair, that would be in order. That would be in order, Chair. Thank you so much. Okay. Let me, without any further waste of time, check with the Secretary if there are any apologies for today's meeting and whether the meeting is correcting. Uh, thank you, Chair. We only received two uh, apologies from members. Honorable Malati has, has apologized. He's got a, a matter that he's attending to. Uh, however, he said that if he finishes that before the end of the meeting, join the meeting. Secondly, uh, Honorable Kibi is, has also sent us an apology. We have received one apology from uh, the minister, Honorable Mtunu, who won't be able to make it to the meeting today. Those are the only apologies, Chair. Okay. Is the meeting Jefferson. okay with those apologies? Chairperson? Yes, Honorable Can you hear me, Chairperson? Yes, um, I can I've just hear you, Honorable Clark. Um, Chairperson, I have just received a apology from uh, Member Shriver. He's caught up in a meeting and he's not too sure when they'll be finished. He will try and join when he's finished, but he will send a written apology as well to your office. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is the meeting okay with the apologies? Yes, Chairperson. I think we should note the apologies presented to the meeting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Malule. As I have said, we are going to receive presentation from Center for Public Service Innovation. I invite the representative of that center to make the presentation. Uh, good, good afternoon, uh, Chair, Honorable Chair. This is Lydia yes. Sibuket. Let or I've Lydia. switched on. Yes, Lydia Sibuket, the acting ED for the Center for Public Service Innovation. I oh, am okay. going. Yes, so I will be doing a very uh, short uh, presentation. I have about. 10 slides that I will go through. Before okay. I go into the presentation, I just want to highlight a few things uh, so that members understand, understand uh, the kind of environment that the CPSI is operating under. Uh, okay. With dwindling uh, budgets, we know the pandemic has also forced us to, to create a new normal in terms of innovation. Uh, a need for agile procurement. Just for members to know that uh, CPSI is operating with very limited uh, human resource capacity. We have about 10 staff members in the line function. We have five SFS members. That includes the acting ED and the CFO. So it means we only have three uh, SMS members in the, in, the, in the CPSI with an operational uh, a budget of about 40 million. So I thought, let me put that in context before I go into the presentation. Uh, the right. next slide, please, Pierre. Can members see the presentation on? I, I can see the presentation. Uh, oh. Yeah, I can see it on my side. OK. So that's the content of the uh, presentation, uh, the areas that I will cover. We all know that the mandate of the CPSI is derived from the Public Service Act, which locates the responsibility on the minister. We recently reviewed, when we, when we were preparing for the strategic plan, we reviewed our vision and we confirmed it as, as it is a solution focused public sector through innovation. Our mission is to entrench an innovative culture and practice in the public sector. 
We are a very small organization with only two programs. Uh, the first one is administration, uh, which has those three work streams. And the second one, which actually does innovation, is called public sector innovation, which also has three work streams, which are research and development, solution support and incubation, and then the last one, which is enabling environment. That's the structure, as I indicated, very uh, small outfit. Uh, uh, the executive director post is still vacant, and I'm acting in, in this position. Uh, we have all in all 38, 31 posts, uh, but currently only 28 are, are filled. Uh, we thought let's put everything in the schematic uh, view so that members can see how it links. Uh, if you go to outcomes, as CPSI, we decided to have only two outcomes. That is innovative culture and practice of the public sector uh, entrenched. And the second one is effective corporate governance. Our outputs are only four, uh, three of which are in the, uh, the second uh, uh, program, which is public sector innovation. We will be doing, uh, we will, over the five-year period and within the, uh, the first year of the five-year uh, strategic plan, innovation, research, and development initiatives will be undertaken. We will also, uh, Knowledge platforms will be sustained to nature and enabling environment for innovative uh, innovation in the public sector. We will also push the replication of uh, innovations in the public sector. In program one, we only have one, which is an unqualified audit opinion on, on financial and non-financial information. Some of the activities that we'll be focusing on are outlined uh, uh, next. Uh, we will be conducting innovation research. To honorable members, I want to say we had a discussion with the minister that the CPSI needs to strengthen this area in terms of innovation research. It's been lacking because of capacity constraints, but we've sort of agreed with the minister that we will try in the uh, five-year plan to strengthen innovation, innovation research. We also will be facilitating uh, 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 solution uh, solution uh, development. In this area, members, we're looking at working with uh, entrepreneurs, with youth, through some of the programs that we are supporting is the hackathons, where we work with youth to find solutions that can be developed further to feed into, uh, 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 to, to solve service delivery challenges. I must say, within this year, with the pandemic, Many young entrepreneurs has, have approached CPSI to collaborate with us in terms of finding solutions in some of the challenges that the country is facing at the moment. Uh, in terms of uh, activities that we are planning to undertake, uh, includes uh, continuing with our uh, knowledge sharing platforms. And I think with the pandemic, it has put things into a spin for us to look at other creative ways you know, things like uh, webinars focusing on a particular area so that we continue to empower public servants. We are also looking at collaborating with the, the school, the National School of Government, to offer some of our courses, which includes design thinking, public sector innovation, to be offered online so that we reach a number of, 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 of public servants. We will continue to also unearth, find these innovations, and again, I want to say to members, a number of innovations are coming out of public se uh, servants currently with, with, with the pandemic in, 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 in play. Uh, an example of this is Charlotte Matlake Hospital, which has come up with one innovation to deal with the, the pandemic. Um, one big program that we have, it's about replication and mainstreaming of innovations. We are challenged in terms of you find that a, a number of institutions or, for instance, have uh, innovations that they've implemented, but you don't get a sense that it, the, there is uptake from other departments. So within this uh, five-year uh, uh, plan, we want to make sure that we actually uh, make sure that that program starts to bear fruit. And we hope that with the experience that we are in now with the pandemic, Many departments, provinces, we realize that 
once we we come across uh, innovations like telemedicine, tele, telemedicine, uh, online learning, and so forth, that we actually can benefit more as a country if the uptake is is wider. Members will know that there's a lot of challenges. I mean, with for instance, in the higher education sector, if you look at students that are studying at UNISA, they seem to be coping better because they used to be on their own. But most of our higher learning institutions are start, starting to struggle because students are not used to that kind of learning. So we hope that through this, uh, this uh, initiatives, we will be able to mainstream some of the, of, of the solutions that will come across uh, uh, SCPSI. Um, I'll go to the next slide. That is just a schematic uh, representation of what I was saying. You can see, I know the DPME revised the strategic plan frame, planning framework. That's our impact statement, um, which then leads to those two outcomes that I've outlined, effective corporate governance and also innovative culture and practice in the public sector entrenched. Uh, then you have indicators under program one, which is the number of unqualified uh, audit opinions. If you go to program two, you have outcome two, which talks about the number of innovative initiatives enabled. When you go to outputs, then it sort of unpacks how you then uh, try to achieve the outcome. I want to focus on, on program two, which has three outputs, which I've already reflected on. And uh, you can see below the outputs, there are indicators in terms of the number of uh, research and development initiatives that will undertake the number of knowledge platforms that we will also undertake within the uh, annual, uh, within this finan financial year, and also within the five-year strategic uh, uh, plan. And the third one is about the replication of these innovations in the public sector, which I think we need to continue with, with, with the replication because you can't be having pockets of excellence throughout the public service and there's no uptake. We just hope that we've learned when, with the regulations that have been put in place with the Disaster Management Act, that when you, 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 people are more likely to, to comply, if, for instance, the National Department of Health were to, to tell all the provinces to implement uh, e-health or any of these initiatives so that we can start to, to bear fruit of the things that we've implemented. So that would go over the five year period, as I indicated. The detail then follows, uh, but I don't think members would want me to go into detail in terms of uh, the numbers. I've also reflected on our budget. Members will see that our budget is actually, it's, it's 40 million for everything, including salaries. And uh, it's been an issue that has been raised that program one takes almost half of our, 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 our budget, but uh, we've been in discussion with minister to find a way of, of, of re, repositioning CPSI uh, to make sure that we, we, we release money from program one, rather than for us to spend time uh, boggled with uh, compliance issues. We are proposing a new form of CPSI, which might be a bit leaner in terms of administration cost and so forth. But those discussions are still unfolding with the minister. Uh, you can see the spread of the budget between program one and program two um, uh, in terms of what is outlined. But as it is, we only have uh, about 18 million for, 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 for the work. Uh, but that 18 million for program two also includes payment of, of salaries. I thank you. I don't know if there are any points that I need to clarify. If members have questions, we'll then take up the questions uh, after the second presentation. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, thank you. Can the DG for department be ready for making his presentation? Because I understand the minister is not, is not, is not available for today. Chairperson, the Deputy Minister is in attendance. Oh, I was not made aware. Okay. Uh, Honorable Deputy Minister, let me allow you to make your opening remarks, therefore. 
before the presentation of the department. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. Uh, let me again uh, appreciate the fact that you have allowed us to come before you to present our threat plan and as well as our APP. And we are doing this at a time when as a country, as the continent and as the world, we are facing this challenge of COVID-19 pandemic. Can the minister show the face, please? Okay. I don't know whether... Um, DM, press, press the, the video. Miss the video. Okay. I don't know whether you can see me now. No, we don't see you. There's, there's an icon, a video icon that you should press on your phone there. Linda. <laughs> DM, are you in the office? I'm not in the office. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, but I can continue as we try to do that. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Chairperson. Um, we we celebrated uh, the International Nurses Day yesterday in the manner that has never happened before in the country, and this is because of the frontline workers, uh, the work that they displayed during this pandemic, which is recognized and appreciated by everybody. They want to see my face. They can't. Can you? And, and, and we as, as the department are also acknowledging the good work that the, our nurses are doing and the role that they play, particularly during this time of the pandemic. And, and Chairperson, I also want to say that on a daily basis, we see... ...servants are doing exceptionally well and they are actually displaying the power of the public sector in the manner that has never been seen before in the country. And 2% also we have in the past been talking about uh, the 4IR. And COVID has actually shown us that as the public service, we are already in the fourth industrial revolution. These meetings that we are convening today for instance, and the meetings that continue to be convened by different departments indicate to us that we have been undermining the capacity and the capability that we have in the public sector. As a matter of fact, as far as I'm concerned, I think the public service has been able to carry the country on its shoulders during this difficult time. And we have displayed the power that we have as the public service, which I believe we should just continue tapping into all that. Having said that, Chairperson, just I think a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. the Minister of Finance indicated that we, he is redrafting budget and is going to cut deep into department's budgets. This therefore indicates to us that we will, as we present the threat plan, but we might be pushed into reviewing our threat plans and our APPs following what the Minister of Finance has said and the fact that he will actually be coming back to Parliament to present a redrafted budget informed by what we are faced with as a country today. So that will actually push all of us into reviewing our threat plans. But having said all that, we are happy, Chairperson, to present our threat plan for 2020-2025 and to present our 2020-2021 annual performance plan. And at this moment, I will request the DG to take us through the presentation. Thank you, Chairperson, and thank you, Honorable Members. Thank you. Thank you, DM. Good morning, Chairperson. Um, good morning to good the morning. Honorable Members. Can I, can I start, Chairperson? Yes, you can. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, good morning to the honorable members and uh, the deputy minister and everybody. 
Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know how to. <laughs> I think because I'm showing the presentation chair, I don't know how to show my face now. Let me see. Okay. I, I don't know how to show it. Okay, continue, continue, doesn't matter. Can you see the presentation on the screen, Chaperson? Yes, okay. yes, we can, can see. Can you see my face? I don't see your face, but I can see the presentation. On the, okay, thank you, Chaperson. Um, basically, what we... I will go through the presentation, but I will not go into uh, uh, too much detail on the presentation because the information has been sent to honorable members on time. What we basically want to highlight is um, uh, the work uh, of the department in terms of the strat plan and the APP, and uh, this is the presentation outline that we are, we are providing. Just in terms of the introductions, um, the Department of Public Service and Administration Strategic Plan and APP for 2021 <clears throat> were tabled in Parliament in April 2020. Uh, the, strategic, the strategic plan and the APP are informed by and aligned to the priority one, which is around building a capable ethical and developmental state, and also by the medium-term strategic framework and the DPSA's policy-related priorities. For this financial year, we have 32 annual targets uh, as the department and uh, a move uh, from 35 annual targets um, in 2019-20 financial year. So there's been some consolidation that we have done in terms of our targets. Of the 32 annual targets, 12 targets are derived from the 2019-24 medium-term strategic framework and the other targets are in line with ministers' priorities. These are the constitutional and legislative mandates that guide us in relation to our work. And uh, I think this just gives a detail as well on those constitutional mandates, the constitution in particular here, and the principles that are embedded, embedded in, the, in the constitution, which I won't go into detail around them. Again, uh, in terms of the Public Service Act of 1994, these are some of the responsibilities uh, given to the MPSA. Uh, so we, we do, we present the strategic plan in the APP in fulfilling these constitutional and, and legislative responsibilities. Uh, this, um, this picture really just shows how the different processes interface with each other at the end to give us a strat, a, a, a strat plan and to give us a departmental plan. And I think importantly also to see is that the National Development Plan uh, also uh, is uh, playing a critical role as well as the state of the nation address amongst others. Just in terms of our uh, 2020 to 2025 strategic plan, uh, our MTSF targets which the department were leading on the following targets. The Public Service Amendment Bill 1994 must be submitted in Parliament by 2023 to include the devolution of administrative powers from executive, of, of executive authorities to the heads of departments. Regulations for the Public Administration Management Act 2014 submitted to relevant stakeholders for concurrence by 2024. Public Administration Management Amendment Bill submitted to Parliament by 2023 organizational functionality assessment tool implemented as a mechanism to measure the levels of productivity and functionality of departments in support of service delivery objectives. This is a, a critical I am not sure where the noise comes from, Chairperson. I don't know. I don't know. I think that maybe members can check if they are unmuted. Yeah, members must mute their mics.
don't know where is this noise coming from. Chairperson, Chairperson, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, yes. I have just I have just decided to mute everybody except myself. Apologies. Um, then the fifth area that we're looking at in terms of the MTSF is business process modernization program in the public service as approved by 2020 to be implemented in 2023. National e-government strategy and roadmap implemented by 2024 towards digital, digitalization of government services, job competency framework for public service implemented, program to institutionalize professional code of ethics in the public administration by 2023, lifestyle audit guideline developed and approved by March 2021. We have moved this deadline for the lifestyle audit uh, to be uh, uh, before March 2021 because there's lots of work that has been done on our part. Income differential data collection tool for this nation of employees developed by 2022. This target we have not included it because uh, it does not be belong to the department and we are engaging with the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation further from an MTSF perspective. Just in terms of Program 1, Chairperson, uh, our targets in terms of uh, the, the, the annual performance targets, we looking at monitoring our fruitless, wasteful and irregular expenditure, compliance with broad-based economic empowerment status, monitored draft public service amendment bill submitted to the Office of the Chief Law State Advisors for pre-certification. This is in line with our MTSF target. Consultations with the Department of Cooperative Governance on the draft public administration management amendments. We have drafted amendments, however, we need to consult. We can't take the process forward until there's agreement with the Department of Cooperative Governance. So there's a process in place in relation to this. Uh, a, a letter has been sent as well to Cooperative Governance. Regulations on selected areas of public administration management act developed. Review of the identified DPSA policies commenced. Annual report on the compliance by national and provincial departments with DPSA pro, uh, policies produced. The, the next um, uh, um, slide will look at organizational functionality assessment tool, which would be issued to national and provincial departments for implementation. The tool has been uh, developed and piloted and now it's a matter of uh, ensuring that there's a wider rollout of the tool. We just looked at how we improve productivity in the public sector. Quarterly report on the compliance by national and provincial departments with DPSA policies. I think uh, I'm repeating this one. The, in terms of uh, program three, the public service employment and conditions of service. Here we're looking at the wage setting mechanisms for the public service to be developed. We are currently still dealing with the wage dispute. However, there's work that's happening at the background in terms of wage setting mechanisms. A transitional plan for the implementation of the uniform job grading system, guidelines for the implementation of proposals on the reduction of costs in the public administration issued, program to improve management of discipline within the public service developed, implementation uh, of the performance management and development system for heads of department senior management, um, service and levels one to 12 monitored. The issue of discipline chair number four in the public service uh, uh, to improve management of discipline, which relates mainly to suspensions and um, uh, all that's happening is an issue that's a matter of attention. I'm aware that the portfolio committee also has uh, given much attention to this particular issue. And um, therefore we should be able to develop the relevant systems that are required. We did indicate that our systems are still paper-based and it creates challenges for us to get information on time. There is PESAL, which uh, departments are seemingly not keen to use PESAL to enter data in respect to the information on suspensions so that we can be able to monitor. 
In terms of um, uh, point number six, approval approved senior management service post provisioning norms and standards issued for implementation by national and provincial departments. This is another area where we 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 we're looking at as part of. Um, uh, uh, looking at uh, how we manage the cost in the public service so that we ensure that we don't have too much numbers of senior management services members, but also senior management services members, we go back to post-provisioning and the norms and standards in relation to that and, 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 and apply them. Quarterly reports on the compliance by national and provincial departments with DPSA policies produced. Um, in terms of program four, Audit report on the implementation of the national e-government strategy issued to national and provincial departments. This, this audit is in respect to implementation in the public service because the e-government strategy talks widely about a country e government strategy, but in respect to the public service, there are specific areas uh, that we are monitoring in terms of implementation. Public service data governance framework submitted for approval, status and recommendations for improvements on the public service information and communications technology infrastructure develop, developed, public service information security standards issued to national and provincial departments, quarterly reports on compliance by national and provincial departments with DPSA. Chairperson, this is um, a, a one area where the assessment uh, that we've made and I saw a report yesterday, I think it's a draft report that has been issued by uh, the World Bank as well on the work they've been doing around ICT and digitization uh, in South Africa, that the, we have lots of fragmentation as mm -hmm. government and uh, we have lots of spending in this particular area. So it's one of those areas that have been identified for cost saving uh, mechanisms in the public sector and, uh, and, and that there's lots of fragmentation that needs to be attended to. Um, in the next slide, which relates to program five around service delivery support, here we're talking about um, uh, looking at and revising our Batupile program, Public Service Month and Batupile Awards. Um, uh, we'll, uh, we'll submit uh, that particular information internally. African peer review mechanism, second generation country review conducted. The minister is the focal point for APRM in support to the work that's done by the president as, as the chair of the African Union. So there's um, a lot of work that we are doing as a country in support or as the department in support to this work. The country is also due for second generation country review processes. And um, there's work we are doing in terms of um, getting the country review process to start. Uh, I think the targeted timeframes are around the period of August um, 2020. Business process modernization program targeted at all government departments, quarterly report on the compliance uh, <clears throat> by national and provincial departments. Chairperson, then there's um, a, a program that looked at uh, governance of the public uh, administration. Here we're looking at guidelines on conducting lifestyle audits. I've indicated earlier on that uh, this, guide, this, this, this deliverable will be um, uh, moved in a little bit earlier instead of uh, when I was dealing with the strategic uh, MTSF uh, deliverables. Data based on public service employees appointed as board members to entities comp compiled. Further category of employees in the public service designated to disclose their interest, their financial interests. Analysis conducted on adherence by designated employees from national and provincial departments to financial disclosure framework. Chair, the, the e-disclosures uh, closed on the 30th of April, but we've been inundated by requests for extension, and uh, it's an issue that we are still dealing with from other government departments and colleagues because they said they couldn't do it. Uh, we, we're dealing with this matter, and um, we will respond to the other to the to those who have asked for 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 for, for requests for extensions. However. Um, the, the system is web-based. Even though people are working remotely, they should have been able to, uh, uh, to, to do their declarations. They didn't need to come to the office as the system is web-based currently. A cabinet memorandum on the retention of heads of departments will be developed. Job competency framework for the public service will be developed. Guidelines for senior management service members' participation in professional bodies issued to national and provincial departments. In terms of budget allocations, Chairperson, I don't know if I can ask the CFO who is amongst us to quickly just take us through the budget 
and then I'll, I'll come back and just highlight some of the key updates, uh, issues um, that have since happened since uh, the beginning of the financial year. CFO? <coughs> CFO, are you here? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, thanks, DG. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. Uh, can you all hear me? Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, thanks. Uh, I'll just quickly go, go through uh, the, the slides relating to the budget allocations for, for, for DPSA over the NTF. As uh, on slide 16, we indicated to honorable members that the DPSA has been allocated in a budget of over a 1 billion, uh, 800 million over the NTF period, which is 2020 to 2023. But in terms of the annual allocation for 2020-2021, which is the APP that we, are, we have just presented now, the budget for DPSA is 565 million, 706,000 uh, rents. Um, we have indicated, uh, Honorable Chair, in the previous uh, portfolio committee that from April, which is the, this uh, new financial year, um, both the National School of Government as well as Public Service Commission have been allocated their votes. So we are no longer going to be uh, <clears throat> doing any transfers to those two. That's why our budget, if you look at it, has been reduced because the two uh, departments or entities have been allocated their own um, votes. The only transfer that we're making at the moment, as we will see in the next slide, is, is, uh, is, is only for CPSI. The next slide, which is slide number 17, um, we basically indicating the the, the 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 information that we've indicated in slide number six in, in terms of programs. We've got six programs that the the, the director general has just presented. Um, uh, program one, administration policy development. Program two, public service employment and conditions. Program three, up to program number six, which is governance. Administration. If we look at the total budget for DPSA only, excluding um, the CPSI, it's 524 uh, in the first year, and it goes to 582 in the in the in the outer year. Um, and the allocation is indicated um, as, as 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 in the slide um, in terms of how we have uh, it has been allocated on the on the programs. The, um, the, what we will note is that administration, which is program number one, takes the big chunk of the budget. This is due to the fact that uh, program one is actually administration, is actually a support unit for, for the department, and all uh, many un units are actually housed under program one, including HR, finance, internal audit, uh, DG's office, as well as minister. Um, slide number 18. <coughs> we Slide number 18, the next slide, DG. Uh, the next slide, we we just indicating the breakdown of the um, uh, the previous slide, DG. Slide number 18. Yes, thanks. The slide number 18, what we indicating? We just indicating the pie, pie chart in terms of how the budget has been distributed in the vote. Um, uh, as I indicated, administration takes the big chunk of, of the budget, which is 46%, and um, it's actually followed by the other CPSI, it takes 7% of the budget, and the other programs, 10% um, for governance, uh, as indicated in the slide. Slide number, um, the next slide, we actually indicate in the next slide, which is slide number 19, the allocation in terms of the economic classification. <coughs> um, here we indicating for economic classification, which is composition of employees, goods and services, transfers as well as payment of capital asset. Uh, composition of employment uh, takes the big chunk of the budget, which is um, 333 million in the first year to 376 in the outer year. The reason for that is basically that uh, unlike other um, <coughs> departments, which like your public works, we don't have in, in infrastructure uh, projects. Uh, DPSA depends a lot on employees because we, we are actually a policy department. So that's why the big chunk of our budget goes to employees. Um, and it actually follows by, it's followed by food and services at 33% and transfers uh, that we're making to basically 
the CPSI. Um, I think that concludes my part in terms of the um, of the of the of the budget matters. Uh, thank, thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, thank you, CFO. Just now, I will. I will take the the committee just high level on some of the of, of, of the issues. There's been some questions around the issue of uh, the wage dispute for 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 the last year of the remaining agreement. And uh, just as a as, as an update uh, to the honourable members, that uh, as the department we remain committed to implementing the agreement. However, there are matters that require collective attention. There is um, a dispute on non-implementation of the agreement that has been declared by the unions in the PSCPC, and uh, the parties to the current dispute are COSATU unions as well as uh, SAPU, which is South, I think South African SAPU. The PSA, NAPTOSA, and HOSPESA have indicated that they will be taking the employer to court. Conciliation of the dispute commenced on the 28th of April via a virtual meeting. And uh, yesterday I got a letter from uh, Nehau, I think, that indicated that they are pulling out of the dispute, they, out of the process because they want arbitration. And um, I think tomorrow we're having a, a, committee, a meeting of the ministers, ministers, mandating ministers committee in relation to how the matter will be handled uh, forward. We are supporting, we have proposed uh, as a matter of regulations that the, a, a regulation that allows the bargaining councils to be able to uh, to meet and deal with some of the critical disputes like this dispute uh, should be uh, included in the review of uh, regulations um, um, uh, or in the regulations in relation to a uh, level four. And uh, we're still waiting to see how that process uh, will come out. Um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, to jump and go to the next one. On the Auditor General matters, I would want um, uh, uh, the, the CFO to give further detail on this issue, but um, uh, we don't have, uh, we didn't have irregular expenditure for the previous financial year. So the irregular expenditure that we de we're dealing with the 18, 19 uh, uh, financial year, we incurred an irregular expenditure of 310. The report that I've received is that um, 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 a bulk of this irregular has been condoned or resolved. However, there is one case that still requires attention and uh, there is information that has been brought to my attention in relation to that case. There is an investigation that still need, need to, to be done uh, by the department. So it's an issue that uh, I'm giving attention to in, in respect to ensure the investigation is done and finalized. Uh, but the CFO is here to take any further questions on that matter. In terms of the um, COVID uh, work, working arrangements during COVID, we have employees who come to the office as the department, and um, uh, and we, we we have provided the necessary PPEs, and we're in alignment with the circulars that we have issued as the department in relation to that. We just had an engagement today in preparation for level four because there is additional employees that need to come to work. We've had our own management engagements, and today we had an, an engagement with our labor to make an input uh, in the department, labor union, labor representatives in the department to make an input into the plan itself. We have received an input um, and we have um, uh, gone back with, to update uh, or to consider some of the issues that are being raised by labor. Um, I think those slides are merely dealing uh, with those issues in detail, Chair. I'm not going to go into the key detail, but just to say some of the key work that we've been doing as the department, we are in, we are going ahead with the implementation of the APP because we have not received any correspondence so far that says we should um, review at this stage because of course it's COVID, so we take it as if uh, things are going as normal and we're implementing our APP until we get uh, confirmation or correspondence. I know that there's engagement between parliament, presidents and national treasury on this particular matter. We, we've also been focusing on the management of the wage uh, issue 
and we've also been focusing on operational support to departments. There's lots. Of, there's a number of circulars and directions that we have issued as the department just to issue guidance and on review of some of our policies. There's also a, a number of cabinet memos for appointments of DGs and DDGs that have been processed that goes through uh, the cabinet processes. And um, just in terms of some of our, I think this is the last slide chair that talks to some of our progress and challenges. We, uh, the, the minister approved a new structure for the department in February 2020. The new structure compresses, uh, reduces the programs to five instead of six. So instead of having six DDGs, you would have five DDGs in the department. Um, and this, the, the, the new structure also um, tries to, to align and strengthen a lot of responsibilities uh, of the department and established um, some of responsibilities like the, the technical uh, assistance unit, which is TAU, that is supposed to assist us with following some of the uh, corruption cases involving public servants in the in the administration. We have finalized the job evaluations and job descriptions, and we are ready to advertise now to fill the position of the head of this particular unit specifically. We have processes that are unfolding in relation to our microstructure as the department. Some of the challenges I think that uh, we're dealing with in the department, I think that the department has gone through a number of changes, and this has affected uh, leadership uh, of the department in terms of your leadership at an exco level and at an sms level mm -hmm. i think there's lots of conflict in the department but it's issues that we are dealing with and uh, we're looking at how we further provide support for change management and just to support colleagues to continue to do their work um, there is um, a, 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 so that we can strategically focus on our mandate as a department and be able to deliver on the expectations. Some of the issues that we have picked up, uh, and I think the committee has picked up some of the non-compliances with our own policies and prescripts as the, as the department that we issue. We, we, we are giving attention to these particular issues. We are strengthening our capacity, especially on risk management in the department. And um, I think lastly, what I want to say is that there is possible mm -hmm. cuts in fact, they are not possible. They are going to happen. That are going to happen uh, as a response to COVID because there's, there's the resources that are required to finance the COVID plan. I think when the president announced, he indicated that he will, the, the 500 billion package, about 130 billion of it will be coming from the public service uh, budget. So there's a, there's a clawback that's going to happen in terms of our budgets. We are still awaiting for Treasury to give us firm guidance in relation to this. But when we get that guidance, it is likely to have an impact on our strategic plan and our APP. And there may be adjustments that are required. And we have raised those particular issues uh, with our leadership. And we, and we will uh, uh, then work accordingly once that information is available, Chairperson. I'd like to thank you, Chairperson, uh, for the opportunity to present this report. Thank you. Chairperson? Chairperson should unmute. Okay, the, I think the Chairperson has got a slight uh, issue there. Uh, I'm sure you can unmute. Yes, yeah, I can you hear now. Okay. I was saying, Chairperson, I'm done. Thank you uh, for the opportunity to present. Thank you. Before I give the honorable members opportunity to, to interact with the two presentations, let me co correct an impression that might be created uh, when I did not see that the deputy minister was there leading the delegation. See, when <laughs> we are holding meetings in a very awkward environment now through 
uh, 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 Zoom. Uh, Honorable DM, I know that when the minister is not available, the deputy minister take charge of the delegation. So I want to apologize for that. Can the DM hear me? I do, Chairperson, and I'm okay. And, 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 yes, I'm okay. Did you hear me, DM? Yes, I have heard you. Okay. Yes. So, okay, thank you very much. Let me now invite honorable members to interact with two those two presentations. Can Resolve the slides be removed from the screen now? Has been removed. Not yet. Not yet. I can oh, see. From my side. It's gone. I can see. Thank you. Thank you. And the abong and the Exactly. <laughs> and the other one, Chair. Your boa. The cancer. The cancer in golf. Oh, okay. Okay, let me see. Let me just take off my stuff. Chairperson, um, Mantuli. Yes, okay, Chair Mantuli, you can, you can, you can shoot. Th thank you, Chair. Yeah, that's uh, good now. Thank you, Chair. Um, starting with the uh, public service uh, uh, innovation, Chairperson, it, it's clear, Chairperson and the meeting, it's clear now, uh, as of now, that uh, our threat plans, our APPs, might be disrupted um, um, with the look of things under the situation of the pandemic. But uh, we we welcome the, the 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 presentations as they are, and looking forward to say we'll be working together. Uh, whatever challenges that we are going to be facing, because it's not going to be easy for the committee to predict as to what is going to happen after all this. But uh, I wanted to check something, small Anyana thing, uh, with um, innovation, uh, public um, service innovation, to say with the dwindling uh, budget, as she mentioned it, how much does it affect them to execute their task? Um, and uh, I understand that DM mentioned that moving forward, there might be cuts and reviewal of budgets. So as, as this one is dingling now, how much is it affecting? The, the, the execution of, of their task. And um, in, 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 she mentioned the online learning. You see, I am not convinced, but if she can maybe sort of share with us whether they are viewing it uh, working uh, properly. I am not convinced with the understanding that uh, um, it's not every learner that has got a smart gadget. That is number one. Number two, the inequality is still um, creeping uh, our, our 
social uh, lives. Because you'll find that uh, hence the learners are away from the institutions. Some of them may be in the remote areas where there are no networks. And in that regard, for me, uh, those learners will not uh, benefit under this situation. That was with a, a, a ooh, 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 public innovations. Then uh, they mentioned, oh, she mentioned the, the short staffing. And I wanted to check as to whether the short staffing is in the pipeline of the, the for it to be fixed. Then with a DPSA, it, it goes back uh, to the agenda that has been set up by the pandemic. Uh, the pandemic had swayed um, almost all of us. But uh, I, I heard that uh, there are some webinars that are taking place. Again, with those webinars, I wanted to check if they are effective enough um, in, in so far as their view. Um, but again, I wanted to check if the DPSA have uh, identified any ill discipline uh, regarding departments in cooperation with the pandemic because people are, are working away from work um working away from work are people disciplined enough to be effective or people uh, have just some have just assigned um special leaves for for themselves because this is the time where we all need to be joining hands and working very hard uh, towards servicing uh, our people. In terms of the irregular expenditure, I don't know whether I got her well, uh, did you well? If they, the, 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 the irregular expenditure has been incurred from 18, 19 financial year. And the, the, the department is only going to do investigations now. To me, that didn't sound well, but over and above, I wanted to check um, as to oh, if if so, what was then the outcome of the scope and, 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 and the outcome from AG so far? Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable Soma. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Good afternoon, colleagues and uh, uh, Honorable DM and the, and the team. Chair, let's welcome the two count uh, presentation in terms of the annual plan and the threat plan, as it were. Chen, with the CPSI, probably DM will take this one because it's more of a political uh, statement question like uh, and a suggestion. I, I, I thought at one stage when we interacted with the minister in this current uh, administration, uh, there was something to the light of saying that they will review the 
the CPSI intent whether it needs to be within the department or to be housed in the relevant department or body. But I will say uh, acting uh, DG spoke about reporting for this change, which I'm saying it cannot be an ongoing concern. There must be a, a finality. Why I'm saying that, Chair, is because the CPSI in terms of the product of innovation that they get from the market, there is a, a, a lesser appetite from the department to take those uh, 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 innovation uh, products to improve service delivery, as it were. They become uh, uh, event oriented, and the most uh, sphere of government that needs CPSI products is how they are made. That talks to say our relationship. If I say our, I mean CPSI with the science and technology department. Probably we need just to strengthen that one before we disappear as CPSI. So in short, I'm saying that the department must look at through the the, the minister look at repositioning and closing that 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 exercise. The other one, which I think the acting DG she tried to talk to, although it was not quite explicit, is the any specific replicated innovation solution taken by department to improve their service delivery or executing their mandate. This morning, the ICT focus group of parliament spoke about that probably as South Africans, we need to produce our own platform that will also uh, protect our sovereignty as a country. I.e. this platform is not ours. We have sourced it somewhere. So this needs to happen. So I'm saying there are risks only, uh, associated with that. To chair on the and uh, I'm going now to DPSA. I will try my level best not to be tempted to cover the areas last week the minister spoke to and the DM today. Uh, I, I think also the DG on her the last four slides talked to those areas in terms of recapping other issues that we would have loved them outside the plans that they would need to talk to. Slide 23, Jennifer. Correctly, I'm starting with slide 23. We must continuously lead by example. That captures the point that has been raised by Honorable Mkuli in terms of uh, ongoing disciplinary uh, of issue of uh, financial management that is questionable in terms of investigation and all that. Probably we will get a road, a road plan. How far is that one? Because I don't think it started currently in administration. It's a carryover matter. Uh, thirdly, Chair, in terms of slide nine, uh, it, it, it does give a worry and a sense of discomfort from where I'm seated, where the, the predetermined objectives in terms of the year, in particular, the finalization of the submission of the PSA bill to Parliament in, in the year 2023. Probably I'm raising that from an uninformed position. What is the roadmap in terms of the targets that we need to take uh, the department to take almost four years, three years? Because we see the one year of the sixth parliament is gone, so we're left with four years, which means parliament will be then under pressure during towards the, the, the closure or, 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 or towards the elections, then we'll be also looking at the bills. The House Chairpersons of uh, the Chairperson, uh, Chairperson Chair of Chairs did raise that issue. We are aware of that, Chair, that we mustn't put Parliament under pressure in terms of the bills that will come towards the end of the term. And I'm raising that one that it needs to be looked at because how do you measure a thing that will be measured by the incoming Parliament? That becomes a problem. Then I'm talking to slide nine, Chair in its totality, because it makes difficult in terms of the predetermined objectives, which are not measurable, which are not quantified, and then you are, you are unable to do a, a robust monitoring thereof if there are no roadmaps that given that we say, finally, finally, we do have a sense of comfort. This exercise or this bill will be concluded at this time. Noting that it still has to go to the National Council of Provinces as well. 
the a slight toward change. Uh, I, I, I'm sure as we move along, uh, we will then uh, get a, a clear, uh, predetermined, measurable objectives of the department uh, to say we are as we were planning to have to do this by this time we should have completed. I, I I'm raising that one very mindful chair that some of the programs and activities of DPSA are outside their control. They need to be a uh, bargaining council and other departments to buy in terms of consultation and uh, and the rest. Uh, the more or less the second last point chair. I, I will agree with the acting DG in terms of slide 13 without repeating it. That that one is very important. Uh, and slide 17, Chair, uh, I'm happy that the DG has acknowledged that it might change in terms of the of, of the budget allocation and the business plan uh, in terms of 2021 current financial year. Uh, and I'm sure, Chair, uh, you'll agree with me. We did request when we're engaging with the minister and the other DPSA family that would love also other questions or other information that you are needing to be submitted in writing. And I've observed that we only receive from uh, PSC. The other two entities, they didn't submit their written responses in the issue that you raised previously. Uh, the other one, Chair, uh, I'll raise it at the end before we close the meeting, which is the administrative in house committee issue out of the committee. Other than that, we, we appreciate uh, the, how the department manages stakeholder management in terms of consultation and that. But I must say that we, as a, as a country, must do our level best that the country doesn't come to a stop still on the issues that pertain to the public services it way. Importantly, during this critical time of COVID-19. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Honorable Clark. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I must say, I'm really battling with the sound. The sound's not great to hear all the interactions. Um, but, you know, um, I have to concur with Member Lusoma about the public administration um, bill, the public service administration bill that it's going to take up until 2023 to come to Parliament. I think, you know, that's really cutting the time frame for the sixth Parliament for us to deal with the necessities. Um, just on the CPSI, um, the DG said that intervention research needs to be strengthened. And I'd be very interesting to know what mechanisms they're going to put in place to do so, because as we all know, the new buzzword now is the new normal, and how that would align with the environment we face at the moment. And I think the CPSI has a, has a real opportunity in order to um, tap into um, the new normal as they are speaking, you know, um, and, and come up with some really innovative ideas in order to deal um, with, um, with issues in terms of innovation and research. Then um, just on the DPSA, um, in terms of the lifestyle audit that will be finalized in March 2021, I would like to say to the DG that this this, uh, these lifestyle audits have been on the cards for so long now. You know, I'd really like to see some um, fun, finality and closure and, and get a report from the department once these lifestyle audits have been finalised. Um, at the last meeting that we attended in Parliament before COVID-19, we had a very big discussion around the disciplinary cases. Um, chairperson, and um, I would really like to see a report coming back to this committee to see how far we are and what strides we've made in order to deal with all the outstanding disciplinary cases. Um, then I would also like to know is um, uh, uh, the, uh, the DG said that there are certain norms and standards that they're going to put in place to approve senior management services. Um, I would like to know what those norms and standards are um, 
then also in terms of the financial disclosures, Chairperson, you know, last year at the end, when these financial disclosures had to be submitted, you're well aware that um, there was a huge issue around this as well. Many people did not submit their financial disclosures. And I must um, conclude with the DG. I mean, it's not that the whole world's come to a standstill. We are all able to work in terms of home-based having our computers and, and, and systems available to us, and I can't see why this should be extended. Um, then in terms of fruitless, wasteful and irregular expenditure, um, all the part, uh, I would like to know, um, you know, are all departments managed through the DPSA and do they generate a report in terms of outcomes with their targets aligned with the APPs as well as their budget? in terms of um, fruitless wasteful and expenditure, and as I picked up through that mechanism. Then, um, then also, um, we, you know, we all, we all know that we're in a very difficult time in this country at the moment and worldwide. And um, uh, when will we be in the position to see the adjusted um, APPs in terms of COVID-19 so that we um, understand what implications it's going to have on our departments. I mean, the DG just said that 130 billion rand was going to be um, used from from the DPSA, and that's you know concerning in terms of, of of what we need to do and how we're going to work around that to ensure that we are still functional the way we should be. And um, last one, um, the guideline for the implementation of proposals on reduction of costs. Um, has this guideline been finalised and will this be presented to the committee? That was in one of the slides. Unfortunately, I, um, didn't, I didn't have the presentation in front of me and I had to try and follow from my phone, which wasn't a great situation. And um, yes, that's all. Thank you, Chairperson. Honourable Tabia Kool. Honorable Tabia Kulu. Honorable Tabia come in. They Honorable Tabekulu, can you hear me? Chair, can I, if I can just assist, Honorable Tabekulu and Honorable Silesta, they are struggling to get in. Oh, what yes. they have noted, uh, they have raised hands, yes. Yes, they have, but they are struggling Honorable not to come Tabekulu. back. <laughs> okay. Uh, Honorable Maluleke. Thank you, Chairperson. I didn't raise my hand, but uh, let me just welcome the, the presentation by both the, the presenters. And also to say, uh, most of the questions that I had, uh, honorable members have raised them, especially Ask honorable the Soma. Okay. Can you hear me, honorable chair? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. So I say most of the questions that I wanted to raise has been raised by Honorable Lusoma. But then I had only one concern because when DPSA was presenting, the way she was presenting, I, I thought maybe, I'm not sure whether it's my understanding, but it seems as if DPSA is not affected by this pandemic. Because it seems as, as if everything is fine with them, their plans, they are just going to go on as if nothing is happening at the moment. But at the end, when the lady was presenting, then I had some of the issues that were raised by the committee to say that this pandemic, Pandemic is going to 
affect some of the tigers that so we lost you my some name. of the questions that i had okay thank you Jefferson. thank you who can help honorable Tabekulu because he has made a note for me that he wants to ask questions. Honorable Tabekulu? Okay, let me pass. Uh, honorable Mutsipe, can you hear me? He has got a similar problem, like the Honorable Tebe Kulichet. Okay. Okay, I will allow the uh, Center for Public Service Innovation as well as DPSA to respond to question raised thus far. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you to members for all the comments and, and, and questions. I will start with uh, the first one uh, regarding the dwindling budget and how how is it affecting CPSA in terms of execution of our our tasks. I must say, members, uh, honourable members, that um, the CPSA has a has a has a has a history of being underfunded, and with the pandemic as well uh, as has been alluded, this has continued. But I think. Uh, if 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 the, the 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 proposal to review the CPSI comes into play, into place, we may be able to reprioritize some of the funding. I can give an example now in terms of uh, some of the reprioritization that can come into play with the new uh, ways of interacting. For instance, we, we could have been in Cape Town today for this meeting, so that in a way saves um, money in terms of travel you know, overnight accommodation and so forth. Um, I must say as well, we have a proposal, a, a document that we've put together. It's still work in process, uh, progress, where we are trying to advise the minister in terms of how we can reconfigure the, the organizational structure to make it uh, uh, more more aligned to, 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 or to allow us more to, 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 to deliver on our mandate. With regard to the online learning, honorable member, I, I, I take your point. It is still very challenging to to connect everyone. It might need for us uh, as a government to look at a hybrid model. We have innovations that we found where a well-resourced school is linked to a school in the rural area. Obviously, you need some connectivity for that kind of setting to happen. Uh, for instance, uh, at Sanwat uh, High School in Gauteng, one is Lechbron High School, which is in Pumalanga, where you use the formal model school, model C school, to connect to under-resourced school. And the teacher at a more resourced school gives a lesson that can is broadcast live to the other school. You can actually connect more than one school to a model C school and all the learners will be able to listen to that presentation. So we do have some of the innovations that we are prepared to share with, with, with the, uh, the, the Department of Education to make sure that they are, they are able to reach um, rural schools. I must say as well, the Minister has tasked us to work with KZN with the La Mesi School of Innovation. It's an idea that was on the table, but it was canned. Just before the pandemic, we were in contact with uh, the KZN Department of education to see if we can revive the School of Innovation. Many learning points will come from that engagement and we will be able to share with the other departments to adopt those. It, it, it will remain a challenge because as you know, even with um, not everyone has a smartphone. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of challenges in terms of connectivity. Broadband is not up to speed as well and, uh, and all those things. In terms of short staffing, we are currently in a moratorium to fill posts. Um, uh, 
and this is related to the other process of reviewing CPSI. We have a number of people who are on contract, uh, uh, who are contracted for a short period to help us with, with, with uh, challenges that we, we face. But we are hoping that um, the process of, of repositioning the CPSI will, will sort of unfold at a quicker speed so that we can deal with us, uh, some of these challenges. Uh, Honorable Lesoma, it's true, we need to really work with the minister in terms of uh, th this review. Uh, I can simply say that when we had a meeting with the minister just before the lockdown, uh, he had indicated that we need to meet with him and the DPSA to take this forward. I've also alluded to the members that we already have a draft proposal in terms of uh, which the functional assessment committee can consider uh, as one of the ways of, 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 of re re reviewing the CPSI. With regard to replication and uptake of, of innovations in the uh, public uh, in, in departments, Honorable Lesoma, it's still a challenge for the CPSI to have some of these replications uh, taken up. But I can give honorable members uh, a few examples or just one example. We had one uh, innovation which was called, which is now actually relevant for the pandemic as well. It's called Vulamans, and it was done in partnership with uh, the Water Research Council and the University of, of Stellenbosch. What it does is that it, it's a point of use uh, filtration system. So we, we, we actually replicated in, in Limpopo, and uh, we, we've been selling that idea to other provinces because if you install a Jojo, for water supply and the water is not filtered you may still be giving people water that is not clean so if you put the filter within the the jojo tank then at least you are safeguarded it's sort of made sure that uh, the water that they are getting is actually clean water honorable clark yes uh, research uh, research innovation research is actually still a challenge as well but what we think we are going to do going forward is to collaborate more closely with research councils and, for instance, foresight uh, practitioners. And because we only have one research person within the, uh, the, the organization, we, we cannot run away from outsourcing some of our work. You can imagine if you only have one person responsible for research throughout uh, the year, obviously you won't be able to do much. And because of the pandemic as well, we are forced to, to align our work to, 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 to what is happening currently. In our, we've already kick-started projects for this financial year, and one of the discussions that we had is that research needs to be relevant to what is happening because that's important information and knowledge that will be needed post-COVID. For instance, we, we said they might look at, you know, uh, what is happening in the country uh, uh, or in the continent in terms of the pandemic response. We also said we need to start to create a repository of innovations that are coming out in terms of uh, addressing the pandemic, especially in, in, in South Africa. Um, uh, I think there was, a, was, I think I've covered all, but if I've missed any question, I'll ask my team is online as well to come through to try and respond to those questions. I missed, uh, comments by Honorable Motsepe because of the connectivity problem. I thank you, Chairperson. No, we, we are going to, we are, we are going to, to read the, the both um, Motsepe's question and Mutsepe Kulu's question. I will ask the Secretary to do that so that those questions are on record. In the meantime, can uh, DM respond to her questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Captain. Um, I will just respond to a few questions, but then the DG will cover other questions. So on the issue regarding the process to review CPS, that process is ongoing. Um, the minister will take the decision based on scientific and factual information, and he has put those uh, in, in the process, in fact, he's put those into action so that at the time when he's due to decide on where to place or locate CPSI, that is not just based on what he thinks, but based on facts and scientific 
information or research information. So yes, it is on board. On the issue of bill submitted, to take note of it, taking into the fact that even parliament still has own processes that might take longer. However, I want to say person that even on the side of the executive looked into the processes that must as you process and bill because what happens in Parliament happens at the executive side. But we take into account the issues that are raised by the members of the portfolio committee to say maybe 2023 might be too late. We look into it's possible to shorten the period. But there are processes that are not within our control. The net leg process, for instance, is not within our control. The cabinet process is not within the control of the DPSA. And sometimes we have got to take this to public for comments for over a long period, depending on the interest. And we believe that many people might have interest in the amendment bill, but we take note of what has been said. Um, on the issue of financial disclosures and 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 the request to extend period, I think she explained that as the department, we take the lockdown as not being loose for people that are supposed to be at work. It's not a holiday time for people that are supposed to be at work. However, we consider the request and see to do and if there is possibility, then we'll do that which we can do. And maybe DM, DM, yeah. you, are, you are breaking up, DM. Oh. Yeah, you are breaking up and the members are struggling to hear you. Oh, I don't know. Can um, you speak again? Do you hear me? Sir? Now I hear you. You are breaking up a lot. Okay. Uh, maybe I was on the last speech by Maduleka, which I want to respond to, to say he was, I think she was saying the department makes the presentation is like there's no COVID-19, no pandemic. Maybe just to mention the person, the process of developing a stretch plan and APP, they, start long, they started long before the pandemic. To the extent that even the budget was presented in Parliament by the Minister of Finance before the pandemic. As of now, there's not been any changes on the budget itself. And therefore, we can change that which we have done. But as soon as there are changes that are indicated, that will require us to review that we will do that. And of course, we, as the DG explained in, in her presentation, we do accommodate some work that will come as a result of the pandemic, how the public sector is responding and how the public sector is affected by the pandemic. We do take into account all that, as probably you've also heard from the presentation from the CPS. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can, Master, can you, you put the questions from Honorable uh, Mutsipe and Honorable Tsebekul? And in fact, we request the DG to answer other questions. Oh, okay. Mastral, yeah. can you read the questions from Honorable Mutipe and Honorable Tabekul? Thanks. Uh, I will try under under the, the circumstances, Chair. Uh, um, the one that I, I see here is from Honorable Tabekul. It directed to uh, CPSI. Uh, he is asking when is a permanent appointment of executive director be finalized since there's an acting director. Uh, another one is from Honorable Clark. Uh, directed to CPS as well. Uh, it reads as follows: CPS is is a is is. It's, a, it's critical for them to have a decent research department in order to function. I do not know how they will fulfill their mandate with only one researcher. I think it's a comment. Okay. Uh, the other one is from Honorable Tebekulu. Uh, he is asking on part of investigation, some employee quickly resigns once they feel investigation are in place 
and are scorned to take employment in other departments. It seems as a concern uh, from Honorable Tsebekulu, or maybe maybe the department can clarify what then happens when a, 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 a public servant has been investigated. Uh, is that a public servant uh, uh, allowed to, to go to another department and, and, and get employment? Uh, yes, I, I I think that's about that. That, that, that those are the ones that I, I can actually find now, Chair. Okay, here's another one. Mm -hmm. uh, Honorable Tebekulu, what recommendation does uh, P Center for Public uh, CPIS can provide, knowing and confirming the challenge of tool of trade uh, and network problems in certain areas? Uh, Chair, those are the only ones that I could find on the. The There's another one now that has gone through from Honorable Mitsita. Yes, yes. That? I have just uh, saw it now, Chair. I'll read it as it is, yes. Chair. Is there any project that the center is busy with right now for COVID-19? If there is any, can they tell us what it is? Number two, did COVID-19 pandemic contribute towards prioritizing certain projects. Number three, the two South African tech premiers that have created a trailblazer COVID-19 test kit that provides results in just 65 minutes. Has the sender made any contact with them on how they can discover this creation? Uh, those are the questions, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mastor. Can the center and both uh, the center and the DM respond to those questions read out? Oh, thank you, Honorable Chair. DM, I, do, I was hoping that you'll respond to the first question about the appointment of the EED. Um, I, I, I think let the part of the questions that we'll answer in writing because I don't want to brainstorm it. Yes, but I think we'll be in the process of pointing because we have tried our level best to fill vacancy, particularly those of strategic positions such as DGs and so on. But to be to, to, to give the correct and precise answer can we respond in writing. And yes the DG has an answer. Thank you, DM. Um, I will take the questions that were asked. Um, I think that the, the, the question comment from Honorable Clark, it's also our concern that we, we, we are really understaffed in terms of uh, researchers. Um, a, a question, I didn't get it quite clearly, Honorable Chair, but it has something to do with uh, what CPSR would propose for lack of tools of trade and connectivity, if I'm, I'm, I'm correct. I think we, CETA needs to be engaged. Remember, our connection even today is, is made on, 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 on CETA infrastructure. And uh, I think uh, as part of, of solving this, uh, these problems, CETA needs to be engaged to make sure that uh, when people work on, or offline, uh, having meetings through uh, uh, platforms like Microsoft Teams, the connectivity must always be up to scratch. I'm not sure what route can one use, but within the MPSA, we have what we call the OGCIO in DPSA, which are probably, because they are responsible for policy, might be a route that we may need to take to make sure that they, they, they ensure that connectivity stays up to scratch. And then in terms of projects that CPSA is busy with in terms of COVID, I mentioned in my presentation that we, we wanted to explore digitizing the screening form as a start, uh, just to see which obviously we want to, because we are sharing the building with, D, with DPSA, we were hoping that we will engage with DPSA to make sure that, uh, because our entrance is one, that our online screening form should be, uh, I mean, now it's paper-based. You can imagine somebody who has to consolidate that information on a daily basis. And as you come in every day, you need to fill in your name, your ID, all those things. But if that was done online, then 
the form would be pre-populated with your contact details and you'd only complete, uh, you know, those screening questions and also your temperature. And it will be easier for the department to then consolidate that information when it's needed. Uh, the trailblazers on COVID-19, we have not made contact, but I'm told that uh, the Department of Science and Innovation is actually working with them. We might w want to uh, sort of uh, be part of that process as CPSI. I missed the second question from Honorable Trebe Kulu. Um, maybe the Secretariat can repeat that question that came before the trailblazer on, on COVID-19 tests. I uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Can we probably read that question? Thanks, Chair. I, I think it's this one of uh, when is the uh, when is permanent appointment of executive director be finalized since there's an acting director? I think it's that one, Chair. Okay. In fact, okay. in fact, in fact, I think it's the question that is, is there any project that center is with for COVID-19? I think that's the question. It's the one that she's referring to, we've responded to it. Okay. Okay. In that case, I think I've covered all the questions, Jay. Thank, I thank you. you. Is there any other question that members feel strongly to raise? Yes, please, Chair, if I may. Okay, Honorable Sam. Chair, thank you so much uh, once more again. Uh, I would say probably it's not a question to uh, uh, just to say in, in relation to what when we're engaging with the department in the few next days, it's uh, in relation to slide 26, COVID-19 regulations. I, 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 I'm suggesting that on the ground in terms of the, their implementation, they seem to be having lots of uh, minor contradictions from various departments. If um, I'm not too sure whether it's COPTA or GPSA responsible, both departments, yes. They must make sure that there is a synergy and, and, and avoid the contradictions that confuses the community and the, and the law enforcers. That's one. Two, Chair, in our next meeting, I would love to hear status of the housing scheme for public servants, as it were, because there is a scheme in place. And I, I'm not too sure how are we managing it and its progress in terms of its implementation and also uh, our public servants taking advantage of that. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Claudia, can I have a note from Honorable Malati that there's a question that is not asked, answered, in fact. Can you read that question so that it must be answered? Uh, I'm, I, if Honorable Malati can direct us to that particular question, uh, it was uh, from what I see, uh, I've, I've presented all the questions that were given to me by members. I do not have uh, uh, questions from Honorable Malati. Chair, sorry, Chair. Okay. Chairperson? Yeah, yes, I can hear you. It's DPSA, I, DG. I think there's a number of questions that we have not answered yet. Uh, DM touched on a few, but others are still not answered. Yeah, they must be answered. Okay, thank you, Chair. I can try and answer some of them. I think there was a question around uh, webinars that are taking place. Um, I, I think our response is that as a department, we have not hosted any webinars at this stage. We are exploring that platform uh, in future for some of, our, of the policy issues we are dealing with once the minister is ready and has signed them off to take them at that level. But we participate as and when invited to some of the uh, webinars that are taking place. Um, it seems like an effective way of engaging people, uh, considering that you can't bring people together. There was a question around uh, ill discipline that might have been identified during uh, the pandemic. I think that uh, for us in the department, uh, we have colleagues who have been working remotely, and, um, and so far we have not picked up any cases of ill discipline uh, uh, from our colleagues in the department. We have asked... Um, the DGs of all government departments to send us 
um, a copy of their plans and to send us reports in relation to people who have been working during level five. And we will also add a question on whether there are any disciplinary issues that are coming in relation uh, uh, to, 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 to their departments. In terms of uh, irregular expenditure, I think the CFO can give details on this matter, Chair. But uh, just to say from my side, uh, the report I have, I have engaged with is that most of the irregular expenditure has been condoned, which means it was investigated. But there's one case, and the CFO indicated that this case has been submitted to the office of the DG in the past, but there's been no progress in relation to it. And they are resubmitting it to the office of the DG now so that it can be given attention. Um, the issue around the review of CPSI, Minister has uh, tasked the DG to work on that particular issue. Even yesterday, I was seized with it, and today, this morning. So there's some work that's taking place there, and uh, we are advising the minister in relation to that. And I think linked to the issue of when is the position going to be filled, if you are reviewing an institution, it's usually advisable not to fill any vacant positions, especially at top management level, uh, until you are very clear on wh what is the institutional form the institution will take. Um, there was an issue around uh, slide 23, on ongoing uh, disciplinary plan. I think uh, we take the feedback. It relates to the to this particular case I'm talking about that relates to the to the to the irregular expenditure that we are, we, we, we are responding to. And we will certainly uh, we, we can um, uh, share the information on progress of this case chairperson. Um, uh, uh, it hasn't the investigation has not started and it will there is a there is a finding from AG but uh, my understanding is that the investigation has not started yet. So uh, the investigation will start as soon as possible because the information now has been submitted to my office. In terms of slide nine, yes, I, we note the issue, Chairperson, about the time frames. These are given to us through the MTSF process, which is coordinated by DPME. However, in our own discussions internally, we have said, let's look at the time frames where we can finish or complete work earlier. Let's develop our plans. Let's ensure that we complete earlier so that we can reach um, um, the desired outcome before the time frame is given. Until a review process for the MTSF, the time frames stand as given, but there's nothing stopping us from our APPs to relook and review the timelines. And we're having that conversation internally in the department. Um, slide 12, um, I think here the issue is that um, this this is our APP. So it, the APP is not going to give you the detail that uh, members are looking for unless the members actually give us that information and ask for specific detail because the APP is a planning tool, so it highlights the, the deliverables for the year. So what you see in our annual performance plan is things that we need to deliver for that for the, for this particular financial year. There's an issue around uh, 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 slide 13. There's a there's a request that we must submit in writing. There's questions that were asked previously and we must submit in writing. Uh, we apologize for that, Chair. I'm going to follow it up and ensure that we do submit in writing responses to some of those questions that were that were asked previously. The lifestyle audit guidelines. As I indicated earlier, we, we have had a discussion about this internally. I think the bulk of the work has been done. But remember, honorable members, that from our side as DPSA, we are, it's purely the guidelines. Now, we still need to engage and consult with other departments, but COVID has also brought lots of challenges around consultations with government departments. But we do think that um, now in level four, it's much more better because there are people who are working well accessible in a number of departments. The numbers are higher compared to, uh, to to level five. So we should be able to do this. Certainly, this work is going to be completed in the current financial year. And I think we are targeting to complete in the in the within the first quarter of the current financial year, which is the quarter that we're in. In terms of the disciplinary cases, yes, uh, we will we will provide a report to uh, to the committee in relation to this. The issue about post provisioning, uh, as it relates to norms and standards, is the the the, the post provisioning is about uh, uh, really the system that you work in to determine 
um, how many positions should be SMS, uh, senior management services in a department, and what positions lower there should, uh, 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 should be lower than that be, be, be considered. So that's the work that we are doing. Again, it's in our APP for for 2021, so it's a deliverable that there, there, there is work that must be delivered in the current financial year in relation to that. Um, in terms of the 130 billion budget I was referring to, the 130 billion amount I was referring to is in context to the speech of the president uh, when he announced the 500 billion package that some of this amount would come from government departments, not from DPSA, but from government departments. Obviously, from DP, all, all the departments, there will be something that will be taken from them, but we are waiting to hear from Treasury in relation to specifics on that. Um, we are affected by the pandemic, certainly, but remember, we are not a service delivery department per se, we are a policy department. So remote work uh, is much more better managed in our space compared to other spaces that may be service delivery or that may have other challenges. So uh, we may seem like we're not affected because remote work still continues and people are still continuing with some of the work that they need to do. However, some of our challenges are relate to the fact that not all our officials have the necessary uh, tools of trade like your laptops to be able to do the work. So we're looking at that particular issue and looking at our budget um, over a certain period of time, how many more laptops can we buy? How many more uh, people, officials within the department we can be able to connect so that they can work effectively remotely? The second issue is uh, consultations with government departments. Lots of policy work that we're doing, we need to consult. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's one-on-one -on -one consultations that take place. So um, it's the, that's the space that we're still struggling with as officials, come back to work and other, others are working remotely. So there's some work there that we need to do around how we consult effectively. Of course, the financial pressures as DPSA, we do have a small budget and uh, we will be affected by any cut of budget that is uh, uh, brought to our attention. I think the last question, um, Chairperson, there was a question around, uh, I think there's a comment around manual screening of the forms raised by the CPSI acting executive director. Uh, we are in conversation with GEMS because GEMS has developed an app that we can use for screening for members of, uh, for, for government departments uh, across uh, provinces and nationally. There's just a little bit of work that we are doing with GEMS so that we can communicate with everybody to confirm. Um, uh, I think two days ago, yesterday, I signed a letter that went to the to the acting DG for health as well, because it's a partnership between health, GEMS and us that will ensure that there is access to the to the app. So it's easier when you use an app to screen because the information is electronic and it goes to a central database that immediately we can review as the department to understand uh, what's happening with the status of our employees in the public service. So there's some work that's uh, taking place there. I think that by Friday, I would have received a confirmation from the principal at GEMS. Um, the, the, there's an issue around, uh, we, we note, Chair, the issue that has been raised regarding the status report that is required for the housing, housing scheme for the next meeting. We are going to prepare a report in relation uh, to that particular issue. The, the last comment that was made about the synergy in terms of, of regulations and et cetera, I think we take that issue and we take it back to the, to the net joints or the coordinating uh, capability that we work with as DGs uh, in terms of dealing with COVID. Uh, from our part as the department, I think that the circulars that we have issued on, on, on people coming, going back to their responsibilities at work and et cetera, we've, we've issued a number of sectors. There's generally been clarity on, 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 on those issues, but I must say that there seems to be here and there different interpretations. The interpretation by Labour 
at times may not be the same as in, uh, same as the interpretation by management. But where those instances uh, arise, we impress upon the heads of departments to engage with labor in mm -hmm. their departments and to be able to deal with those issues around interpretation. I just said in my meeting now this morning with the labor in the department and we're dealing with those issues uh, around some of the interpretations uh, of the regulations and etc. Um, uh, but Chairperson, I think that's all from our side. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oh, honorable members, honorable I don't think members, that's a question that is not answered now. Let me at this point thank uh, all the honorable members, the honorable deputy minister, and members of the staff for making it possible for us as a committee to hold this meeting as we have done. Thank you very much, everybody. The meeting Before stands you, adjourned. You are, no, Chair, 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 Chair. Before you adjourn the meeting, I'm sorry, Ms. Lesoma. Chair, uh, let me firstly appreciate that the, the info that I raised last week for to be submitted to us, it was. However, it was for the fifth administration, which is the tracking system tool. If we can get the ones under your leadership, because the one that we have been given is under Honorable Maswangani, which is the fifth term uh, chairperson. If we can do that, Chair, I can be very much happy. Thank you. Okay, I think that is noted. Uh, I see a question when is the next meeting? Uh, the, the Secretary of the committee will make. Uh, members are aware of the next meeting very soon. I'm not going to answer it now here. Thank, thank, thank you very much, honorable members. Thank you, Chair. Thank Long live, Chair. The meeting is adjourned. Long live, Chair. Long live, Long the live. Chair. Long live, Long live PM. Long live, Long live. Long live. Long live. Long live. Long live. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned.